Well, hello. My name's Penny, and I live in the southeast of England with my husband Pete and my four chickens. And it's the most glorious afternoon. What's Chinwag about this week? Well, I've been round to Mum's this morning, and we've done a little chat about 1958 March. We only got a few days into March because Mum unpacked something from her hamper. In actual fact, she hasn't got a hamper. She's got very few things from her childhood. In fact, I think what she shows us is practically the only thing and she's absolutely amazed that she's still got it because it's gone through the war, when they moved up to Scotland. She just doesn't know why she held on to it at all. But anyway, it's quite interesting. So we've got a piece from Mum. We've got a fascinating fact that I'm going to chat about. Well, it's not so much a... Well, it is a fact, and I found it fascinating. So I thought I'd talk about that. I'm going to show you my quilt that I'm working on at the moment. Now that my frolic one has been um, quilted, I'm now working on my storm at sea because I'm going to take that to Alison and have it... Uh, you know, long arm quilted. That was the reason I stopped it. I, I bought it a week before lockdown at the uh, show in um, oh, Islington, you know. And I did start the quilt, but then I ran out of puff because I wanted to do different things. It was different times. And then I got to the point was I don't think I'd be able to quilt this now. It's a big double bed quilt. But now I felt found smart frogs, then I'm going to take it off to Alison. So that's good. What else am I going to show you? Oh, I received a present today, and I'll show you that. And, oh, a viewer, she said, would you show me how you sew up? Because yours is always so neat. I want to say thank you very much. Uh, so should we start with this? And then uh, at the end, oh, yes, we've had a storm. Well, we weren't expecting a storm. Other people in the country had snow, but we had a storm and it took the, we got a sideway that runs from our kitchen in between our garage and the um, bits of, you know, roof. Well, we were up all night, flew over the house, landed by the car. What really woke me up, apart from that noise, was the toilet seat going wallop down because the house shook so much so that wasn't pleasant the next day we still we couldn't go out it was howling it didn't stop till about eight o'clock that night and so the next day I went out for a walk and I walked into town my usual walk along by the sea but the wind had completely dropped but the sound of the sea I don't think I've ever heard it like it was it was roaring, you know, like you say, the roar of the sea. So, yes, that's a little film. Well, shall we start with this then? Um, shall I do a little twirl? Here it is. So it's got cables down the arm. Can you see? It's like a, a V stitch. I absolutely love it. But I might knit another one. And then moss stitch at the top. And I really like it. I've got a, sh uh, a shawl in matching, the matching colour, uh, just to go round if I need it. I'll show you the pattern. It's in Rowan Studio Knits by Sarah Hatton. There's quite a few in here I really like. But as I say, when something's comfortable, you just want to keep wearing it, don't you? But I'll show you. It's supposed to be knitted in um, soft tweedy yarn. Yeah, page 84. Rowan tweed, I think. Rowan felted tweed. But I knitted it. I knitted it in 2016. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, in January. That was the mauve one, and I knitted this one in the August. 
So you can see how old they are, but they've worn beautifully. This is the pattern. And I did it, I didn't do, want to do it in felted tweed. I did it and I, I thought I kept the, oh yes I did. I kept the ball bands in here. I did it in Adriophil, Sierra and Dina. Yeah. And that's 100% alpaca. Right, there we are. Now the viewer said, could you show me how you sew things together? Because yours always looks so neat. Honestly, it's no secret. <laughs> All I do is get, a, you know, a wool needle with my, with my wool. I just go in and out, just a running stitch. I don't do a back stitch. There it is. And, you can... and maybe sometimes I do a running stitch round and then I'll go in between those stitches and do a running stitch round. I find that way it sits really nicely. I don't need this on now. It's warm in here. But it's comfortable. Oh, Would you like to see the gift I got today? My friend Heather, who writes the poems, I expect if you go back, if you're new, there's some poems through them through the episodes and if you're a regular viewer you will have heard them the carpet shop and anyway she was a roller girl wasn't she well her mum Dorothy Dotty Dot um, she she's made me this and I can't tell you how thrilled I am with it it's exquisite and it's just what I wanted in fact I want to get some of the fabric and make a dress out of it. I've been wanting to make a dress for the summer and I want it in yellow. I know because I bought one last year and I love it. It's yellow and um, I can't see anything that I like but this I love but she's made it for me to keep my embroidery bits in. So here it is. Here's the back. It's all padded beautifully. And then she, she's in her 80s. She used to uh, be a tailoress and sew kilts because she comes from Bonnie Scotland. And uh, she used to, you know, do all the kilt work. So here it is. So I wind on my silks on here. For those of you who don't do embroidery. I keep my needles and bits and bobs in there. And then I keep my work in here. And funnily enough, when I finish my Storm at Sea quilt, my next thing that I want to do, it's on my list, is some embroidery by um, Lorna Bateman. And so here we go. This will give me the incentive. So I say thank you very much, Dorothy. I know she watches. It's I shall treasure it always. And what a lovely idea. It's light. It's beautiful absolutely beautiful. So I want to show you my storm at sea. Now I usually make quilts by hand but this and I've only ever bought two kits. I bought the if you've watched before you'll have seen the tumbling bo blocks one by Kay Fassett. I bought that kit because I loved it and I bought this kit when I was in the um, in the show, in the, the uh, whatever it's called, Stitch and Sew show in Islington a couple of years ago. And I just thought Pete would love it. And he does like it. And he keeps saying, oh, is that for my bed? And I, I, I think it's very nice. But boy, you have to be really experienced to do it, I would say. It's made up of nine squares. So three three and three. So I'll put a picture up here of what my table looks like cutting it out. The reason it's very hard is because everything is cut on the bias. So what does a bias mean if you're not a crafter? It means that it stretches like that. So when you sew it together you've got to be very careful not to stretch it. You have to put the pieces, what I do, I put the pieces together Cut them out accurately 
Put the pieces together gently without handling too much. I then iron it. Well, in quilting, you don't need to iron. It's not like ironing your clothes. You just put the iron on. And then I carefully take it over to the sewing machine and I sew it. And of course, it wants to push it out of shape as it goes through. So it's a bit of a monkey. I'll show you the square I've just cut out. Oh, there's the middle. Those bits go around this. So you can see, <laughs> you can see how it can all go out of shape. Here's my square. So I'm on the last line now. It's very, very effective. I'll show you a bit here close up. And then I'll put a photograph up of the two lines together that I've done. So you've got this storm at sea effect here, but then you've got a much bigger one that goes right the way, oh, that, this one goes right the way down, this brown and the light blue. And <laughs> and can you see that design there that's coming as well? As well as that one in the set there. It's rather splendid. Anyway, I'll put a picture here of the two lines together and then I'm starting on my third line and then when that's done that's going off to Smart Frogs to be quilted and I'm quite excited. Whew. I've told you about my woolly, I've told you about the quilt and I'm going to lead straight on now into the fascinating fact because I've had washing machine head about it because this episode is my 40th. 40 weeks non-stop I put up Penelope's chin wag and I thought to myself goodness me 40 and I thought well what's so special about 40? What's different between 39 or 41? So I just looked it up and it's quite interesting that most people like that they somehow value even numbers a lot more and one of the things I remember was that if well you plant plants out they say plant in threes or fives if you're going to do a wall of, of photographs you know again odd numbers because what we do is when it's an odd number we take notice of it and we look at it because our brain, our brain focuses on it. Whereas if it's an even number, we just take it all in as a whole. It's quite interesting, isn't it? And so that then led me on to the Fibonacci. And it, I've always been fascinated by the Fibonacci. I was talking to a friend. She said, what is that? Are you joking? Is that Fibonacci? I said, oh, no know the Fibonacci sequence she said, I don't and isn't it interesting I, there I was sitting in the garden the other week and saying oh you know um what was I saying oh this maths is rubbish how can I work out how many boys in a dormitory you know needs cubic air and all of that I wasn't interested if they'd have taught me about the Fibonacci would I have been interested because I certainly was when I learned about it as an adult Fibonacci, that's not his real name, it's Bonacci, I think, something like that. Anyway, he worked out that everything in nature, uh, and I'm going to put some photographs up here as I'm talking, he worked out that everything in nature, what his sequence starts off with 0, 1, 1, 2, add those two together, you get 2. Add two and one, you get three. Three and two, you get five. Five and three, you get eight. Eight and five, and so it goes up. And what that forms is this special angle that everything is governed by. Three parts to our finger. Oh, our whole bodies are. And the plant world, I just have got a bowl of, 
I've got a bowl of these Fibonacci. It's all it. This is set so that the the most moisture. That this is what the scientists think: the most moisture and uh, the most light and all of that. But they don't really know. But everything goes round in that spiral of of that sequence that I just said. It's adding that number and that number together to make the next number that number and the last number together to make the next one and then that goes on and forms well it's just fantastic the golden rule the Fibonacci and everything is governed by that that's my fascinating fact I hope you understood it but uh, yeah it's fascinating we've got the magpies dipping in the pond out there so I'm going to say uh, cheerio for a minute and I'm going to uh, put on mum's piece now. We have a chat and uh, I'll see you after that. Well, hello again. Hello. Good yes. Morning. Lovely morning here. It is. It's lovely. nice. That yes. wind has dropped, mum, and it's yes. lovely, isn't it? We can't, yes. we can't stop the sun all coming in. We've drawn lots of curtains and all yes. of that and uh, yes. we are as we are, yes. aren't we, mum? But what we're going to do this morning is we're going to, let's move you away from the cooker. That's a bit better. Is that better? Yes. Well, I don't know. <laughs> this is what we're like. Anyway, what we're going to do this morning is a little blast from the past, isn't it? It's yes. from the hamper, and it's mum's hamper today. It's her 1958 diary, which, mum, unfortunately, when you look... Yes. Uh, you ended at the end of April. Yes, because we had so many visitors. Yeah, I think so. You're realising that so now. Busy that so, that so busy. So busy. Exactly. To fill it all in. By the time I got to the end of the day, I was ready for bed. I think and so, sleep. Mum. Never mind. And Chrissy yes. was getting older, wasn't yes. he? Yes. And uh, there's a little bit in here about spring cleaning. Oh. And uh, yes, it that says was, that, yes. you know, very, very hard work, mm. it says. Yes. It's very hard work. Anyway, Ooh. washing up may seem a dreary subject, but there are shortcuts to making it more quick and pleasant. Silver spoons and forks can be laid gently in a big pan of boiling water on the stove oh, yeah. after washing. This will do away with the necessity of cleaning them. Dry them while still hot and polish finally with a leather. Oh. A slice of lemon dipped in salt will remove tea stains from the inside of cups. Well, we want to remove tea yes. stains from the inside yes. of cups. Slice of yes. lemon... But we haven't got any silver spoons and forks, dear. No. Thank goodness, because we... <laughs> yes, we don't we want to do to all that no. just to wash up. No. That's a quick wash up, Mum. Yes. A slice of lemon dipped in salt will remove stains. We'll try right. that. Yes, that's obvious. You're right. Yes. With spring cleaning over. Oh, no. I wanted to read the one where it said about spring. Uh... Oh yes, now that the days are drawing out and the sun has more warmth, spring cleaning looms nearer. Are you sure you have all the necessary equipment? Brushes, dusters, polishes, carpet shampoo. Now's the time to, to book the chimney sweep. Don't mm. attempt to do too much spring cleaning at one time. Mm. It's one of the most exhausting occupations oh, there is yes. and needs <gasps> to be tackled gently. Yes. Well, there we are. Yes, and the chimney sweep was the first thing. Yes. Because he would cover everything up. Yes. And my goodness, you couldn't wait for him to go. Yes. So you could get on and start your spring Spring cleaning. cleaning. Exactly. Yes. So life's very different now, yes. isn't it? Oh. So this is Mum's from the hamper. It's a Phillips County Council School Atlas. And we were talking with a friend this week, weren't yes. we, about... Nicknames. Yes. And her name, it, my friend Heather G, who writes the poems, her mum's name is Dorothy, but of course she's got the nickname. Yes. Dotty. Dotty, and we love Dotty, yes. so she's Dotty now. And that brought up your memory of your, your nicknames. Name, yes. My nickname was Old Four Eyes Tolly Bag. Old Four Eyes Tolly Bag. Because I had 
spectacles when I was eight, and oh. they were really oh pebbles. Pebble. They were yeah. awful, <laughs> awful. And the oh. boys used to call me old four eyes Tolly bags oh. because my name was Tolman. Yes, I, Christian. My name. Uh, Maiden name. Maiden name yeah. was Tolman. And then somebody else used to call me Eva Brick. Eva Brick. Because I couldn't Eva Brick because I was only oh, tiny. Oh, Eva Brick. <laughs> yes. And you did say people would never say, Eva, that's not a name. What is it? Ev. Yes. Or they sometimes call me Ev. Evelyn or Evelyn, and I'd say, no, it's, it's Eva, E-V-A. Yeah. Oh, but then often they would just then call me Ev, not Eva. Oh, right. Yes, that was, um, that was a, that wasn't really a nickname. No. I think they just shortened the name. You just you know? couldn't get to grips no. with Eva. No. And yet we found out when we did Mum's history, ancestry, yeah. that your mum's sister, she died... Um, shortly after she gave birth to her yes. baby and her baby died too and they were both called Eva, Eva weren't they? Yes. So she named her little girl which yes. was you after her sister. Yes. So it's a special there name. There were no other no. Eva that I knew no. you know at school or you know anywhere. You never knew where your name came from no. until we started we doing the, the family DNA. tree. Yes, yes. yes. that yes. was lovely wasn't yes. it? So let's look inside your atlas mum. And Dad, my dad has written something in, and good job we knew he was joking. You didn't get a complex, did no, you? No. Here it is. Dopey Tolman, old four eyes. Ignoramus. Yes, he called me old four. Not he said no. I'm not going to put Tolly bag. It's Ignoramus. Ignoramus. <laughs> It's not very nice, no. and people wouldn't approve of that today. <laughs> but that was one of his jokey words when you didn't answer anything or oh. you didn't know anything. You were an ignoramus. ignoramus. Yes. Oh, righty ho. Well, there yes. we are. It, Mum didn't take this to heart. No. It was a joke. Yes. But yes. Um, anyway, it was a very difficult atlas, Mum. When I say difficult, you know, very small and intricate. And tell me how you felt about geography. I just couldn't deal with geography at all. I couldn't. I was never any good at writing or drawing. And the, my geography teacher used to get really cross because my at my um, drawings of of countries and even the working the names in was wasn't it I got awful points I tried hard but I I was just no good at geography and the geography teacher used to really get cross with me but then you said you were rubbish and you said you were rubbish at history yes I was and then we got talking about because we have a cup of tea before yes. we do this and then we got talking about well hang on a minute mum how old were you when you're saying you were rubbish well I was 12 about 12 about 12 yes. and, and what was happening in the world well, when in you the were world, about 12 then, in 1938 yeah then from 1938 to 39 when the war started yeah that whole year all sorts of things were going yeah, on, were. changes of different things, because so much was happening in Germany yeah. with the Nazis and, yeah. and Hitler and talks about whether there was going to be a war or not. There was yeah. discussions going on between different countries. So it's and, very unsettled here. You are yes. 12 years old. Your yes. mum's unsettled yes. too, I think. Yes. And then evacuation came and you said that you lost your best friend because yes. she went off. Yes. Um, but your mum wouldn't let you go. No. We, I even, she even took me yeah. ready with my gas mask on yeah. and everything. And... Uh, when I got when we got there, she said, "No, I can't let you go." Yeah, and we we had we came home, which was we were saying really was a lovely thing because yes. you lost your mum when oh, you yes. were seventeen. You yes. wouldn't have had those years no. with her, so no. that was really nice. Yes. So how hard it is to yes. say you're learning things through all this, you know, time in history, yes. um, and um, you hadn't been anywhere except no. get on a bus, had you? No. No, didn't really know anything about the rest of the world. Well, and when I no think television. back to how, how 
no. much that the teachers then yeah. must have been worrying about what was going to happen yeah. to them with the different things yeah. that were, were going, going on, on in the news. Yeah. So they must have been unsettled as well. So everybody's unsettled. Yes. And, you know, when we did your, your um, family tree, I said, oh, who are these people? aunties oh you said they they moved to south london so we didn't see them very often no. so north london to south london yes. was for mom yes. a bit of a yes. it, well a no-no really three, never mind the rest of the world yes, yes. yeah it, it was three buses and three we buses only, we only saw them three times a year yeah easter christmas oh and perhaps once during the summer Summer, and also yes. when you think about it no television so no. you couldn't watch all these travel program no. so no. history and geography mum yes you know it wasn't easy no. and of course being called tolly bags and all oh. of that must have been hard too and then you left school at 13 because yes. of the war yes so no and separated from your friend, my best friend. Yeah, it's a big trauma in mum's life, from, isn't from, it? From five onwards. Yes. We 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 really your sisters yes, weren't we? We were absolutely. Yeah. We were, you were so close. So we're going to look at March. We'll just uh, look at March in a little bit, and then we'll carry on next time. Um, so where did we get to? Oh, I know. We were saying about the weather, mum. Yes. Right. Sunday, 2nd of March, Ron went to work. See, he started working yes. on a Sunday, Mum, because he's getting his yes. business going, isn't yes. he? Yes, he was getting his business going and carrying on still yeah. with his, his job, yeah. you know, his permanent job. That's it. So that he could get started. and So all weekends were always really yeah. busy. And here, Len comes down. Len, who's the one who's yes. always had the flu and the cold, yes. and he's come down to help you put up the uh, washing line. But you say, Dad hasn't brought you back the bit of metal that you need, uh, so he couldn't do it. And Ted, the next-door neighbour in the afternoon, helped Dad to chop down a tree and clear up the garden. So that was, a, yes. again, a busy yes. Sunday, Mum. Yes. You had a general clear-up yes. in the morning on the Monday and a change-round. Yes. I remember your change-rounds, yes. Mum. We used to come home from school. Dad had come home from work. Yes. Where's the chair? We only had a small room. Yeah. It's always yes. changed round, wasn't it? Yes. Dad never you knew quite where he was going to sit. No. But I always used to say, why do you do this? Yeah. And I, I felt as if I hadn't cleaned properly unless oh. I'd really moved everything. Every, right. So yeah. you cleaned all yes. underneath. And yes. I know you're a thorough yes. cleaner, Mum. Yes. 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 You had a quiet evening watching television. Oh, so that was fantastic. You did the washing yes. in the morning. And uh, Ron was annoyed because the television engineer hadn't come again to fix the aerial. Uh, he went out on Tuesday at 8.30 in the evening on business. So you can see now he's starting yes. to, isn't yes. he? I think that's probably why your yes. diary stopped because you got more and more involved in it. Yes. Next morning you did the ironing, still waiting for the aerial man. And um, Ron went to football with Len and John and arrived home at one in the morning, Mum. Yes. And Len was, uh, he he would take Len home and oh, then of course he would stay have behind. A, have yes. a whiskey, and yeah. Because then he would drive back and... Uh, there was no drink and drive then. No, so he could do that. <laughs> yes. Thursday, cleaning and housework in the morning, Mum. Men came to fix the aerial, hooray. Yes. The picture's much better. And so that's good. Yes. Next day, shopping in the morning, and it started snowing. So that's the 7th of March, it started yes. snowing, very cold. Oh, that was and a terrible winter. And Mum rang to see if you'd take Anne. Um, that's my aunt Anne yes. in Ireland with you on uh, Easter on holiday so you're going away on holiday next day Saturday shopping in the morning Anne came in the afternoon and um, I went off to my friends and Ron went to football he expected Len and John to come round in the evening but nobody turned up 
So Anne was staying and you had a quiet time. Yes. So I wonder if you prepared yeah. eats for everybody. Oh. Do you know Evelyn and John often used to do that? Yes. You'd get all the table laid for Sunday tea and they wouldn't turn no, up. No, that, that's right. They were very they like that, yes. weren't they? Yes. Sunday, Anne stayed all day. You had a worrying half hour in the afternoon looking for Penny over the park again. Oh, Mum. You were a tinker. <laughs> While all the time she was at home. Well, where was I? We only had a little flat. Where was I? Anne said she'd love to come with us at Easter. Yeah. So I think we're going to leave it there yes. because we've done quite a lot. And um, we'll carry on with this Easter business. You and... must have hidden under the bed. Oh, I don't know where. <laughs> we had a very, very small flat. How could you not see me? You probably disappeared into the garden somewhere. I bet. Yes. I was always busy, yes. wasn't I, Mum? Yes. I was a busy person. I was oh, only eight yeah. and a half. And so you're tramping over the park in the freezing um, cold and the because snow. Because our garden yeah. was part of all the flats. And it go, wasn't just like a small garden, oh no. yes. Do you know, that's a memory for me, Mum. I'd go yes. out there and then, uh, do you know what, I'd just go wandering around and I'd wait for people to stick their heads over the balconies and say, can I come up and have a talk? <laughs> and I'd go and stand on their doorsteps yes. and have a chat with them or they'd invite me in. Yes. I tell you, no wonder it's chin yes. <laughs> I know. So that's where you must have disappeared. To. I reckon. <laughs> and you're over the park looking for me in the snow. <laughs> well, we'll leave it there anyway. Yes. Just a little blast from the past. And we'll see you next time. Yes. Lovely. Bye. Bye-bye. So thank you to Mum. It was, it was a thrill. She can't quite work out why she's got this atlas and nothing else from her childhood. But I'm glad she has got it. It brought back so many memories for her. It really did. And we sat chatting afterwards about them all. So that was nice. Thank you for sharing. So I'm going into the kitchen now. I'm going to make some Eccles cakes. You can't buy good Eccles cakes down here and I adore them. So I'm going to have a bash. And I'm going to say I'll see you in a, a fortnight. Well, I think it might be... No, yes, it will be a fortnight because this is Saturday. And then I'll see you... I think it's the 31st of April. So I won't be around for two Saturdays, um, but if you've pressed subscribe and also the bell, you need to press the bell because then all, the bell says all, and then you get notifications and you'll get the notification on the 31st. So thank you for doing that. My subscribers, are, it's a joy. Um, I feel like I'm talking to a few people now instead of just myself which is a joy. So anyway, it'll either be straight if walking along into town or it'll be going into the kitchen and then a walk into town. So I'll see cheerio and uh, I'll see you short, well, either shortly or, yeah, you know what I mean, don't you? Bye. I'm not going to make a proper Eccles cake because I tell you why, I've got some um, mincemeat left. Do you remember from my mincemeat buns and all of that? So I thought, well, why not? It's currants, it's sugar, it's nutmeg, it's, you know, all of that. And I just thought I'll put some of that in. I'll see how I go because I haven't made this pastry before. So what I've got in here is 110 plain flour. And then I've put 75 grams of butter, hard butter, block butter, in the freezer. It's been in there for a, about an hour. And I've taken it out and I've grated it. And so I've got my grated butter here. Okay, so I'm just going to squash that together as is my usual way of making pastry. This is what Delia says. I'm doing Delia. And I'm mixing the butter in with a knife. If I did it with my fingers, it would all start to melt again. And you have to grate it. So put it in the freezer. You've probably done this loads of times before. I haven't because I couldn't get the butter. It's a thrill that I can now. Right, so there we are. That's all all right. Pop some water in. I'll get my water. See how it goes.
That's it. And I'm going to put it in my trusty wrap. Oh, I'll do it with this hand. Yes, that, oh, that's lovely. Make it into a, a square. There we are. Get the bits on there. That's it. And I'm going to pop that in the fridge for half an hour and I'm not going to take any shortcuts. That's going to be half an hour. Okay. I'll come back then and we'll see what we get. So I've rolled it out and she said, Delia said, cut it in, roll it into an oblong and then cut it into five in each rectangly oblong. I've got four because I thought if I make them any smaller, you know, they'll probably be lovely, but I won't be able to handle them. So I'll show you them. There they are. You know me. It's the best I could do. It's always the taste, not look the look. Now, I've got some mincemeat left over and it's not much difference really between the currants, what she says put in, and the, it, it's just very similar. So I'm going to put a little bit of mincemeat in there. Then what you do is you twirl that round, fold it over, And then pat it and make it into your echo shape. Well, that was easier than I thought. That's gone okay. There it is. Let's have another go. Ooh. A little bit of mincemeat. I don't think in Eccles you have too much filling. But anyway, I'll put that in, like that. And then you fold that over to make your little envelope. See why I didn't want to make them too small. And now, of course, with the oven on, the pastry, the, the butter starts melting. There we go, turn it over. Let's have a little bit of flour on my hands. Turn it over. There's an, oh, this is like we had at the restaurant with the cheese. I think they should be a bit thinner. I'm going to make that a bit flatter. That's it. Give it a minute and then flatten it down. Okay, I've got two done. Ooh. Wash it in together. All in together, girls. Never mind the weather, girls. Did you do skipping games at school? We did. Great long rope in the playground. Right. Well, that wasn't so bad. I'm quite pleased. I'm going to put them on a tray. It's rather nice, look. And they're all bound at the back, they're not all holy. Right. Squash them down. Now I've got to make three slits in them. I've got to make 
three slits. Well, as they're only little, shall I just do two? One, two, and on three are on the bigger ones. Two on the little ones. show you what it looks like. Like that. Can you see that? The light. And then I've got to brush that with egg white. So one of my girls has kindly <laughs> given me the egg white. They're all laying well at the moment because longer days. Now, if this is successful, I will make bigger batches because we love them. Pete and I'll have these <laughs> easy peasy. Right, okay. And then you sprinkle the sugar on the top. Now, Delia says brown crumbly sugar. And Paul Hollywood says caster. So I put caster on because I think my mince has got all the brown sugar in it. I hope that doesn't burn. Egg white and sugar. Ooh. Right, I'm going to get those in the oven and I'll show you what they're like afterwards. I think it looks delicious because I love them. If you don't like them you won't like it. Slightly brown on top, nicely cooked underneath. I'll tell you what it's like. It's still hot. Gorgeous. It's lovely. That wasn't hard, was it? You just grated the butter. It's divine. Well, in my eyes, it's divine. But I love mince, as you know. But what a nice pastry. I could make my oblong one, couldn't I? But little Eccles cakes. You can hear the crunch. Crisp, buttery, not too sweet either, because you can eat them with with um. They're supposed to be eaten with cheese, aren't they? But I mean, I just they don't taste over sweet at all. A hit, and you see, mmm. Right, I better clear off, otherwise this will go on for hours. So I'm going to see you in a couple of weeks' time. So have a lovely two weeks. Take care of yourselves and uh, happy crafting or happy cooking or happy walking, whatever you like to do. Bye. Uh, they are, you've just said they're really flaky, haven't you? They're really lovely. He's just helped himself to another one. They're really lovely and they're flaky. Yep. Do you think they taste like Eccles cakes? Mince pies. <laughs> oh, mince pies. Well, that's because I was lazy and just put... Eccles are currants. Yes. Aren't they currants then in there? No. Ah, oh, they're mint. Oh, right. So I'm going to do the flaky pastry. Well, no, I'm going to do the proper flaky pastry with just a few currants in and the absolute echoes. That was just a, a run they through. They taste really nice. They are lovely though, yeah. aren't they? We like them. Yeah. So, well, we might stay with that. We'll see. Um, I'll do either or and let you know. It's homemade mince as well. Yeah, it's homemade mince. Lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly. Bye then.